Go tell it on the mountain. Why? Because Jesus is going to come. And wouldn't it be incredible? <laughs> wouldn't it be incredible if He came this year? And there are times it feels like it could happen, right? Jesus is going to come again. Welcome to 2016. Happy New Year to all of you. And I just would like to just share a few personal review of the year personally. How, how I have felt and sensed God's blessing. And then I've asked two of our young people to join me in just a moment, okay? I had the privilege in March to travel with my daughter in her graduating class. And we went to Costa Rica and we did a mission trip. And on the Wednesday night that we were there, it was my, my responsibility to have a little prayer service, a prayer meeting for a little tiny church that we were working with. Actually, the students were going to about four different sites. And it was one of those little tiny carports on someone's garage, white plastic chairs that everybody pulled out, gravel on the floor, a couple light bulbs strung in that little tiny area. And it was a, it was a privilege for me to be there and Skylar sang a song with me. And I hold that close to my heart. Thank you, Jesus. And, and then Kelly, another, Kelly Wiedemann, another blessing. I just felt really privileged. I had the chance to go with the orchestra and choir and handbells to, from Shenandoah to, uh, to Europe. And one of those evenings, we were in a little church in Nuremberg. In fact, the, the orchestra filled the whole front of the church and there was barely room for the handbells and, and, and the place, there probably was about 300 people in there. It was just a real precious moment. And once again, I don't know how it happened, but um, I came up front. Well, I know how it happened. My friend Stan Siedelbauer is the head elder there and he asked me to sing a song. And so I stood up front with, with a guitar and the orchestra was behind me. And I just did, Tom, I just did one of the songs that you and I like to sing. God on the mountain. You know, sometimes life we're in the valley, sometimes we're on the mountain, but it doesn't matter whether we're on the mountain or in the valley, God is still God. And, 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 I, and I was getting ready to sing and I turned around and I said to the orchestra, I do this in the key of D. And all of a sudden, as I'm singing and playing guitar, here the orchestra comes in. And it was one of those moments that I just will never forget. I'll always just hang on to that. That was such a, a, a blessing. I feel blessed. I suppose number three is um, it was a blessing for me to participate in getting Schuyler enrolled at Andrews University. And it seemed like there was just one miracle after another, one answered prayer after another. And I just continually say, thank you, Jesus. Wow. It's a blessing to reflect on family. I see many of you are with family today, amen? <laughs> It's just something special about the holidays that draw us together. And we can share these moments. I believe what God wanted for ancient Israel is what He wants for us in 2016. I believe it. And before we consider our scripture passage, and, and thank you so much, Tessa, when she finished reading, I said, could you do that again? Next time Pastor Buzz preaches, I, I, want, I want Tessa to read again. Before we look at that passage, just a little background. 
Zechariah was a Levite. That means he was, he was a priest. He was a member of that family. But he wasn't born in Israel. He was born in Babylon. And he was among those who returned from captivity. Stop. Gabby and Elizabeth. I forgot all about you guys. You were hoping I would bypass you, right? Please, come, come. Oh my, I didn't write it on my notes that they were supposed to. Oh, it is there, and I just looked down too low. These are two of our students. And I asked them this morning, just stand right by the pole, but it's ready to go, it's set right here. I asked them this morning, if you were to pick one thing of how God has blessed you this past year, what would you say? And Elizabeth, what would you say? Um, in May, we sold our house, and um, we moved in with my grandma for a couple of months. And was that we, a blessing? I mean, yeah, that yeah, was okay. a blessing. <laughs> That's good. It's nice. To, sometimes seven months sounds like a little long to be with grandma. <laughs> and <Okay>. um, <laughs> we had found one of the houses, but it had flooded, so we couldn't get that one. So we were a little discouraged, and then we found another house that we liked that was closer and but we got outbid on that one so then we were getting really discouraged and then we finally found the house that we're living in now and it was a blessing to find that house. Amen. Isn't it a blessing to find a place to live? And by the way, Elizabeth, you have nothing to fear. In the Sabbath school classroom you told me you couldn't speak up front. She did a great job. Amen. Yes. Thank you. We're so glad you're here. And it's a blessing to have your family on this campus. Gabby. Um, I am going to be graduating this next year and I from, from SVAE okay. and I will be moving to SVA and I am very blessed to have great teachers. Um, Mr. Miller is one of the best teachers I've had and I am very blessed to have him and I'm going to miss him next year a lot. and. Um, yeah, Mr. Miller is just a great teacher. Hmm. I want to go down and give him a hug. Why don't you do that? Just give him a hug. Amen. 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 Wow. You know what she told us, me in the classroom she was going to say? That her dad got a job he likes and we got a car that runs. But this was so much better. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Gabby. Thank you, Elizabeth. Wow. So, before the day ends, we count some of the blessings, all right? We don't do that enough, do we? We don't do that enough. We've all been blessed. God has brought us through. And because he has brought us through, he can continue, and he will continue. And I'm sure Zechariah must have felt discouraged at one point. Because he knew what Jeremiah had prophesied. That God's people would return. He had never been to the homeland. He'd never been there. And now the time came when that group of Israelites went from their captivity in Babylon marching across the desert floor all the way to Jerusalem. Zechariah was one of those. By the way, his name means Yahweh remembers. Yahweh remembers. His prophetic ministry took place during the time of the Jewish restoration, which means that Zechariah only knew Jerusalem as an unfinished city. The walls and gates were up, but the temple was not rebuilt. He had never worshipped in the temple or served as a priest in the sanctuary, and yet he was a Levite. I can imagine there must have been places in the city that carried a visual reminder of war and destruction. Piles of rubble, vacant buildings. And it was Zechariah. Zechariah that God used to bring prophetic words that brought hope and encouragement to returned people. And I believe, 
I believe what God wanted for ancient Israel, He wants for us in 2016. So now, let's turn to the passage that Tessa read. Zechariah chapter 8. Zechariah chapter 8, beginning in verse 2, and I'm reading from the New American Standard. Zechariah 8, beginning in verse 2. Thus says the Lord of hosts, by the way, that phrase is used ten times in Zechariah 8. You can count them. Kind of just emphasizing, this is what God means. He's serious about this. He's repeating this. Thus says the Lord of hosts, I am exceedingly jealous for Zion. Yes, with great wrath I am jealous for her. That's his city, Zion, Jerusalem. Verse 3. Thus says the Lord, I will return to Zion and will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. Then Jerusalem will be called the city of truth, and the mountain of the Lord of hosts will be called the holy mountain. Thus says the Lord of hosts, verse 4, Old men and old women will again sit in the streets of Jerusalem, and each man with his staff and in his hand because of age. And verse 5, and the streets of the city will be filled with boys and girls playing in its streets. Hmm. Zechariah saw that Jerusalem was laid waste. It was full of wretchedness, wretchedness and sin. Irreligion and lawlessness brought mischief, brought mischief with a cold heart and a brazen face. Justice refused to listen to the complaint of the weak and withheld its hand from the punishment of the strong. Zechariah saw oppression and poverty follow in the track of this godlessness. The defenseless were plundered and suffering fell heavily upon the widows, the orphans, the strangers and the cripples. They cried in vain to those who should have been their helpers and no one responded. So the Lord became their avenger. The whirlwind came and desolation filled the land. God is not indifferent to the cry of the oppressed. In every land, wickedness, corruption, and cruelty are the forerunners of doom. But when the doom comes, the helpless are the greatest sufferers. In days of distress and in times of wickedness, the streets are only safe for the strong. The return of the Lord changed the character of the city and its condition. For it says, I will return to Zion and dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. What a great picture of God. That's the Emmanuel, the God with us. The same God who said to his, his people in Exodus chapter 25, build me a sanctuary and I will dwell among them. Build me a tabernacle and I'm going to live there. What a picture of God, the great God of the universe. He, he doesn't find himself perched on some lofty height looking down on us. It's not like he's in a gated community and we're outside. God says, I want to dwell with you. I want to live with you. I want to be a part of your life experience. I, 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 want, to be, I want to be part of your family. That's what he's saying. Please. The return of the Lord restores truth, and truth establishes holiness. The character of the people has changed, and immediately their condition begins to improve. Prosperity comes back. Religion solves the problem of unemployment. <laughs> the true remedy for a bad economy is a return to righteousness. The best cure for poverty is a revival of religion. When the Lord returns, the land smiles and the people sing. The prophet continues in verse 4. Thus says the Lord of hosts, old men and old women will again sit in the streets of Jerusalem. Tessa's Bible said with a cane in their hand. And the streets of the city will be filled with boys and girls playing. I love that picture. The streets are not a compound or a labor colony, but this is a city. A neighborhood of homes where strong men work 
and old folks and young ones play in the streets. The whole population is secure and happy, defended by the Holy Presence, which is as a wall of fire surrounding them. There is nothing in the city that's so important as a child. An impoverished childhood means an impoverished nation. An endangered childhood means an endangered nation. As the child is, so the country will be. And Zechariah, Zechariah saw the way Jerusalem was. And under inspiration, he declared, old men and old women will again sit in the streets. And the streets will be filled with boys and girls playing. Think about it. Little children and old people are the greatest blessing of a nation. They're the test of its government. A world without old people and little children would be a miserable world. Why? Because they span the whole spectrum of our lives. In their helplessness, they appeal to all of the best that is in our nature. If childhood is pure and happy and safe and old age content and peaceful, there isn't much wrong with life. But if a child is neglected and old age is despised, the curse of God is not far off. And the prophet says, they shall play in the streets. Play is the prerogative of children. Childhood is the time to live in lands fueled by imagination and in homes without fear. When the streets of the city are safe enough for children, they'll be good enough for everybody. And I believe what God wanted for ancient Israel is what he wants for us in 2016. Thus the Lord said, I will return to Zion and dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. I believe our campus does best when God is present. I'm stating the obvious. Our campus does best when God is present. And there are two things which encourage the presence of God. What was the city called after the Lord returned? The city of truth. Truth encourages the presence of God. Amen. What did Jesus call himself? I am the way, the truth, and the life. The city of truth, the city of Jesus. When Jesus comes, when truth is part of what we believe and hang on to, when truth becomes the foundation upon our, which our actions are revealed, God's presence comes close. And not only that, it was Jerusalem to be called the city of truth, it was also the holy mountain. And that expression goes back to when God gave his commandments. Mount Sinai shook, it was referred to as the mountain of holiness, the holy mountain, God's commandments. Israel missed God's blessing and presence because they were disobedient. Let us be obedient to the word and will of God. Our campus does best when God is present. Second thing, the Lord says, old men and old women, I like that. It's including me. <laughs> the Lord says, old men and old women will again, they've been there once, they will again sit in the streets. The margin in my Bible says the squares. You get that picture? Have you ever been to one of those cities where there's a town square? We don't have that in Newmarket. I can't think of a place that maybe even resembles that in the least. Oh, there's, they, we have put, oh yes, we have put some benches along Congress Street now. We, we have a semblance of a square. But, but you've been to those cities, haven't you, where, where there's a square. And the old men and old women will return to the square. What does that mean? What are they doing in the square? It's a safe place. It's secure. 
They can go out and, and talk and, and, and get out of their homes and visit and catch up and find out, well, you know, maybe we do have something sort of like a square. Have you ever been to the post office in Newmark at around 11 o'clock? <laughs> That's kind of the town square, actually. Isn't it, George? I'm thinking about that. You know, we come in, we, we, you know, we, we talk, we say hi to people, and I have made, at certain times, I've made several pastoral visits in the post office. The old people will sit there and they'll enjoy the fellowship, the social mixing. I believe this, our adults do best when children are present. They're in the square, they're on the streets, and who's joining them? The children. Our adults do best when children are present. We've just come off the Christmas season. All of us know this, don't we? That Christmas around the tree is always better when there are children. There's something about the presence of children at Christmas time that just bring that life and that joy. As we listen, as we watch, we see their expressions. Children attract older people. <laughs> they do. We are drawn as adults to children. The week before Christmas, I was invited to uh, play music at the Christmas dinner on Wednesday at Life Care. I don't mind playing music, Christmas songs, I enjoy it, but I don't always like to do it by myself. And, and this was the week leading up to, <laughs> week leading up to the, uh, the Candlelight concert. I knew if I asked Kelly to come, she would say no, because she was busy, I just knew it. Andy, I think I contacted him. He was gone, you know. Maybe it was the week after the concert. That's it. You were getting on an airplane. That's what you told me. I remember that now. Getting on an airplane. Okay. Board on. Andy couldn't come. Tom, I don't know if I asked you or not. I'm sorry. I may have forgotten. But it came to my mind. What about Stefan and Alex? And so I sent their mom a text. And sure enough, they were available. They weren't taking finals or anything like that. They, were, they, were, they came. And we had, a, we had a wonderful time. We went from table to table at that Christmas dinner at Life Care. And you know who the heroes were? It wasn't me. <laughs> All of those residents of Life Care loved those two guys. In fact, they would just smile, you know, and just look at them, and I'm, I'm keeping rhythm and singing, you know, and, and they're just playing along. And then we'd finish the song, and they'd ask questions. Oh. How long have you been playing the violin? You play so well. We as adults are attracted to young people. Adults do better in the presence of children. And by the way, the presence of children, when we take our responsibility to heart, causes us to raise the bar of our behavior. Am I right? We are more conscious of our example. The words that we say. How we carry ourselves. You see, adults do better in the presence of children. The prophet says, And the streets will be filled with boys and girls playing. I love that picture. There's something about it that warms my heart, that makes me smile. I think of all the summers we've done flag camp. And, and, and my favorite time of the day is when we take the kids swimming. And I just love to be the lifeguard at the pool or the waterfront. And I call it happy sounds. There's just all these sounds, this happiness and splashing and, and, and just the noise and the jumping, the excitement and the sun is warm and the water is refreshing. The happy sounds of summer. And here, when God is present on the campus, when he's present on the city, it makes the streets safe for the children. And we hear the happy sounds, the simple sounds. Not complicated. By the way, 
it's very difficult to play a computer game in the swimming pool. You know what I'm saying? It's simple fun. And there's all kinds of things that happen too. You know, and this is the other thing that's kind of fun. Because, because not only do adults do better when children are present, children do better when adults are present. Pass the bus, pass the bus, watch. Oh, sometimes I, I wish that mom and dad could be there because I have seen the first time your children have jumped in the deep end. Have gone off the diving board. Or floated on their back. Or had some kind of something going on. You know, there was some little crazy game and they were, they were all imagining these things. I've seen that. And I've spent a lot of time where they've just, Pastor Buzz, watch. Or remember when it was with your kids. Watching the boys build stuff with Legos. I mean, they made all kinds of stuff. Just watch. All you had to do was just be there and watch. Or watch the, the girls play mommy, cook in the little kitchen. Oh, I've eaten so many imaginary dishes. All of them are yummy. Oh, that's good. Make another one, you know. Children do better when adults are present. Which means we need to be present. We need to be there. Show up. Participate. Several years ago, I had the privilege of being at our university in Thailand, Asia Pacific International University, two hours from Bangkok. Like many Adventist schools, located in a prime spot, nothing is around it. Just the campus. All kinds of uh, fruit trees and nut trees. I, I was the first time I ever saw a cashew tree. We were surrounding the campus. Beautiful dormitories, beautiful grounds. The guest house was on faculty row. I was staying in the guest house. This was its own little village. It's still a gated campus. You know, the roads leading in, there's all the checkpoint Charlie. But there, I, I was walking back from the meeting one night and I, coming down on that, that faculty row and here's all these houses and, and it was so warm and pleasant. And the children were out in the street. There was no cars. And they were playing. They were just having fun. There was no, you know, maybe a stick, maybe a ball, maybe just talking, maybe a bicycle. I can't remember, but they were just playing. A few street lights. It was absolutely safe. And I remember as I, I stopped there and I just was taking all this in, I thought, wow, this could be a little bit like heaven? Zechariah must have known that what he was talking about, what the Lord was telling him, wasn't probably going to happen in Jerusalem exactly like that. If we go to Jerusalem today, it's not at all like what we've just read. And so God, through that prophet, is calling us to look to what he has in store for us. A place that will be safe. A place that will be safe for old people and for children. A place that will have all of the, the enjoyment, all of the blessings, all of the things that we look forward to in life. It will be right there. What did Jesus say in John 14? Let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in me, believe also in my Father. For in my Father's house, are many places. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you, the God with us, there you may be also.
I want to be in that place, don't you? I don't care if I'm old, that's fine. I want to be there. Because there's a place in the street for me. I want to be at that place where I can see my children, with your children, playing in the streets, enjoying it. Where we can be family. Where we can just live as God wants us to live. Three things. I believe God wants our campus to do the best it can do, to be the best place it can be, and that will happen when he is present. Let's, hope, let's, let's, let's seek his presence. Adults, we do better when children are present. What a privilege we have to be on this campus of young people. And we are calling all of us to do cross-generational ministry because we do better when children are present. And children, this is the great truth for you. You do better when adults are present. Oh, let us look forward to the blessing that God has for us this year. And maybe, just maybe, we'll experience a little bit of that picture of Jerusalem that Zachariah paints for us. Maybe we'll, we'll experience it here on this campus. And maybe we'll experience it in eternity. Amen, amen. amen. We're going to sing together a little hymn. I've asked uh, Kelly and Andy to join me. Hymn number 428, Sweet By and By. Gives us a picture of that eternal place that God has for us. So please, uh, stand with us. We'll sing this together. We'll put a little instrument music with it as we reflect on what God has in store for us. Keep
shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sway by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore Amen. Amen. Oh kind Father what a promise, what a picture you have given to us that we will be safe in the city you have prepared. Amen. That our children will be safe. That our parents, our families will be safe. Father, we look forward to that day because so many things on planet Earth are not safe. Oh, we need you. We open our hearts to your leading, to your power, to your mercy, to your grace. And please, please, Lord, as this year unfolds in front of us, we pray for our families. We pray that you will hold us in the palm of your hand, that you will guard us, that you will keep our children safe, and that all of us together can rejoice. And we pray that that day will be very soon. We can rejoice and say, when Jesus comes, lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, and he will save us. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Amen.